Hi, my name is John, and this is my family. If you've been to our channel before, you'll know we love to travel. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, our options were limited. So we decided to take our trip on the road to Yellowstone. We rented this 15 person van to transport our entire tribe. Alright, we're ready to go! Yellowstone! Last minute planning actually. Alright, let's take off. Yeah. Two hour drive, the next stop. Unfortunately, we had to drive through raging wildfires and it was smoky the entire way. Our first stop was Red Rock Canyon State Park, featuring scenic desert cliffs, buttes, and spectacular rock formations. This is a 27,000 acre park that is located along State Highway 14 in Kern County and is known for the iconic sedimentary red rock. For those daring enough, you can climb these red cliffs, but make sure your life insurance policy is up to date. Our next destination is to the Mobius Arch. Even if you haven't heard of the Mobius Arch, you might have seen it in films. The area is called Alabama Hills, and it's where countless amount of cowboy movies were filmed. Some notable names would be Django Unchained, Star Trek, and The Lone Ranger. To get to Mobius Arch, head west on Whitney Portal Road from Lone Pine. Then turn right onto Movie Flat Road and go straight for 10 minutes. From the parking lot, you will take a one mile loop hike called Arch Loop Trail. The Mobius Arch window is about six and a half feet high, and if you get the angle just right, you will see Mount Whitney perfectly framed in the distance. All right, we came, we came out here in the middle of nowhere, as you can see, it's a desert over there, Sierra Mountains, and uh, whoa, whoa! The bubble <laughs> beak hitting me, and then uh, something catches my eye, literally. Check it out. Check out what I found. Someone painted a face on this rock. We're gonna go, me and Dylan are gonna go climb it. See how it is. Alright. On your way back, don't forget to stop by Nightmare Rock, where local artists have painted different faces. This one looks like the thing had a love child with a member from KISS. Now we head off to Manzanar, a former Japanese internment camp. In 1942, the United States government ordered more than 110,000 Japanese to be detained in a remote military-style camp during World War II. Manzanar War Relocation Camps was one of 10 camps where 10,000 Japanese American citizens and Japanese aliens were incarcerated. The campsite is situated on 6,200 acres. The residential area was about one square mile and consisted of hastily built tar paper barracks. A single family would live in a 20 foot by 25 foot apartment inside the barracks separated by partitions. In addition to the residential barracks, there were laundry rooms, basketball courts, schools, hospitals, and more. The camp was officially closed on November 21, 1945. 
Today, the site features a visitor center housed in the former high school auditorium. Unfortunately, it was closed on our visit due to COVID-19. At the cemetery, you can check out the memorial obelisk built by masons from the camp. 150 people had died and were buried here. When booking our room from Priceline, it recommended a motel that was two hours off our planned route. It was a mad dash to check into our room and to get the kids in bed by 8. To get there, we had to travel through the mysterious extraterrestrial highway. The extraterrestrial highway, also known as Nevada State Route 375, is a 98 mile highway in south central Nevada. Rumor has it that in 1947, an alien spacecraft crash landed in Roswell, New Mexico. A heavily guarded military base was built and is known today as Area 51. Route 375 attracts people from all walks of life to investigate the unexplained alien phenomena. Some must-see locations would be E.T. Fresh Jerky the alien research center with a towering alien statue outside. Or Rachel, a small town dedicated entirely to aliens. Unfortunately, there was no stopping for us. It was miles of open desert and literally thousands of cows. Time was of the essence. Looks like I'm staying in the Egyptian room tonight. Why does everything smell like maple syrup? The military room? I hope there's no abductions. So we're finally in our hotel for the first night. A motel and uh, ended up driving I ended up booking a room that was two hours away from the city that I originally wanted to go to so we gotta make up some time tomorrow but we're just sitting here making ourselves some dinner and uh, we're gonna have hopefully have a good night's rest so we can wake up early tomorrow and uh, head out so this is the Egyptian room here. Everything is Egyptian themed. And Dylan is just here watching his cartoons. Tom and Jerry. The Egyptian themed room in some random motel in Alamo, Nevada. The next day, we woke up bright and early to make up for lost time. In 1870, the Martin and White Company invested money to extract silver ore in the Willow Creek Basin in Nevada. The Ward Charcoal Ovens were built to melt down mineral contents extracted from the ore. Nearby timber were used to fuel the oven, but operations stopped in three short years due to the mines drying up. Although the mining operations have stopped, these charcoal ovens were still used by stagecoach bandits as hideaways. So we're here, the charcoal oven at the state park here in Nevada. And uh, this whole trip, we've pretty much been the only ones on the roads. And I guess people aren't really traveling in September, unless maybe when school starts. We're just out here, very quiet, peaceful. It's not quite a desert, but it kind of seems like in between a desert and like forest land. So the landscape's beautiful. 
Well, bandits used to hide out here. Little squirrel. Little squirrel. Right there. Let's see. Wow, these are huge. Oh, looks like they're built with stone. Ooh, it's like a castle inside. Wow. It's like we're in a castle. It's nice and cool in here. The kilns are 30 foot tall and 27 foot wide. The walls are 20 inches thick and have withstood the test of time for 150 years. To get here, head south from downtown Eli on Highway 50 for about 13 miles. It was about 10 o'clock when we arrived. So we decided to have breakfast. We are on the road again, getting closer to our final destination. We cruise through endless miles of wildflower, even stopping to get a few photo ops. Idaho welcomes us with open arms. The state has a population of 1.7 million people with an area of over 83,000 square miles, making it the 14th largest state in America. Idaho was an Oregon and Washington territory until it eventually became admitted into the Union on July 3, 1890 as the 43rd state. Although there is a diverse economy, it is best known for its potato crops, which comprises of one-third of the nation's yield. We rest our weary bodies at Twin Falls. Now in our room in Twin Falls, Idaho. And here's Ellie playing with mommy's phone. Having fun, Ellie? She's got her Shower or bath. The kids are here watching Pokemon on Netflix. And uh, everybody's cooking dinner here. We are in the basement level of a house. This is the entrance to the basement unit. Pretty nice space. The first of several waterfalls we have the pleasure of exploring. Located at the edge of Twin Falls, Soshone Falls is a natural beauty on Snake River. At 212 feet, it is taller than Niagara and offers a blend of recreation, playgrounds, hiking trails, and more. Well, this is a sign of better things to come. It would only be a few hours drive to get to Bear World. Bear World is a drive through wildlife park where you will be introduced to free roaming elk, bison, deers, and of course, a variety of bears. The park also features rides, petting zoos, and more. Located 5 miles south of Rexburg, Idaho, on US Highway 20, it's a can't-miss destination for anyone visiting Yellowstone. Now let's start the B-roll.
It took us three days and two nights to finally arrive at our cabin in the woods. There's already signs of fall as we draw near. This beauty features three bedrooms and two and a half baths. And best of all, it has an amazing view of the Palisades Reservoir. The grandfather of the owners bought this cabin as a retreat, and it's been a labor of love to restore it to its former glory. While we were getting settled, we decided to do a bit of homeschool. What is that? Um, it's a junior ranger, ranger book for yellow. Oh yeah, you're doing the ranger book, yeah. And afterwards, we took a hike down to the lake. It will be two hours to get to Yellowstone. Yellowstone was established in March 1st, 1872 and is known to be the first national park in the world. The park is best known for their geothermal features, and the most popular one being Old Faithful. If you plan to visit both Yellowstone and Grand Teton, I recommend getting the National Park Annual Pass. This can be purchased online, or you may also buy it at the park entrance. So we're gonna get in with this. Head northwest on US, 191 North US, <coughs> 287 North right North Power Substation Road. So they know when it expires. Yeah. This person doesn't have her annual pass. She's just paying for it. The first stop on our list is the West Thumb Geyser Basin, where travelers historically would arrive by stagecoach from Old Faithful. There are convenient boardwalk paths that you can follow. Yellowstone Lake is said to have the shape of a human hand. West Thumb is the largest western bay that would be the thumb. It also is the largest geyser basin on the shore of Yellowstone Lake. While you are exploring, make sure you check out the fishing cone. Visitors to the park used to catch fish and cook it inside the cone by boiling it. Also, go over to the abyss pool, named because of its deepness and beautiful color. Ooh, steamy right here. Steamy. Good. So we're out here uh, on the west thumb of Yellowstone Lake, walking here on the boardwalk. And uh, this is probably, I don't know if you can see, but this is probably the clearest lake I've ever seen in my life. Very clear. I'm not sure if you're supposed to swim in there or not. Yeah. And on this side, we have all the hot springs. Very hot. That's why they built this boardwalk boardwalk so you don't fall in Maybe water and burn yourself. Warm. You think that water might be warm? Probably. Or, or 
Yeah, that's probably a, a warm water going on over there. Yeah, so we're just walking through here. We're gonna make a loop and then on to our next stop, which is gonna be Old Faithful. Watching Old Faithful squirt is a national park tradition and draws people from all over the world. It is one of 500 geysers in Yellowstone and one of six that park rangers can accurately predict. Maybe it was just our lucky day, but we got two squirts at the same time. Next up will be to visit one of the waterfalls from a place coined the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. Although not quite as popular as the lower falls, the upper fall certainly merits a visit. The 110 foot waterfall holds its own in terms of scenic allure and sheer power. So we're going down to see the Grand Canyon, as they say, this is not of um, Idaho. Idaho. Oh, what? No, Yosemite. No, no, Yellowstone. I don't even know where I'm at. Yeah. Grand Canyon? They call it the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. And don't get confused with the Arizona Let's go. From the nearest parking area, you will walk a mere 450 feet to the lookout. Alright, gonna see something, I think. Oh, we gotta go down there to see the waterfall. Most people don't linger here for too long after some quick photo ops. Now it's time to go see some wildlife at Hayden Valley. The typically lush green valley is best known for its habitation of bears, herds of bison, elk, deer, and moose. The wildlife viewing is best at dawn or dusk on the seven mile stretch of road. The day we went, we were able to catch some grazing bison. Humongous. We got our first bison out here. We got daredevil out there. Jackson Hole is a valley between the Gros Ventre and Teton Mountain Ranges in the U.S. state of Wyoming. Mountain men and trappers named it Hole as a term for large mountain valley. It spans an area that is 55 miles long and 6 to 13 miles wide. The town of Jackson, located in Jackson Hole, has a population of about 10,000. We ran and played with the sun on our shoulders and felt like free kids. Heck. We could have been wearing the swings in one of our own houses. We were the children of God's creation. As for Nolan, he spent that time climbing a ladder. A strange little smile on his face. Watching Ellie fall down. Ernest Hemingway once wrote, The world is a fine place and worth fighting for. Want to see the miracle, son? Be the miracle. Don't let these crab apples pass you by. You know you want some. You know it. I know. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dada. 
Happy birthday to you. Yay! <laughs> Nothing to blow. <laughs> we played, picked crab apples, and celebrated Dada's birthday. About 30 minutes from Jackson, you will get to enjoy the beautiful Jenny Kim Lake. Jenny Kim Lake is a glacier lake that is 256 feet deep and is 1,191 acres. You will be able to take a scenic boat ride, hike, and access major climbing routes. We decided to go off the beaten path take a dip in the freezing cold waters. After about one minute, my feet went numb with excitement. Now it's time for our scenic boat ride. Just kidding. Dylan hurt his ankles. I think we're just gonna see it next time. We salvaged the rest of the day by making a quick stop at the National Museum of Wildlife Art. The 51,000 square foot building was inspired by the ruins of Slane's Castle in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. The core of the art is traditional and contemporary realism, with the centerpiece of the collection being from Carl Rungus and Bob Kuhn. You will also be able to enjoy a beautiful sculpture trail. Oh yeah, John, work it. You know you want it. Uh-huh. Come and get it. As soon as the sun sets between the mountains of the Palisade Reservoir, it's time for us to relax. The Granite Hot Springs Pool is located at the end of Granite Creek Road south of Jackson off of Highway 189. It is a developed concrete hot spring pool situated alongside Granite Creek amongst huge spruce, fir, and pine forests. If you aren't camping, be prepared for a 10 mile scenic drive on a bumpy dirt road. We arrived a little before opening hours and decided to wait around a gorgeous hidden waterfall. We're about to go to the hot spring and we found this waterfall. Hold on. Gotta hike down this steep area. The scenery was truly mind blowing. Wow, Nolan! Wow! Oh my gosh! So beautiful! Dylan's ready for some hot springs. I see the hot springs. Yeah. Okay. Maybe kids can do it too because the temperature's not that hot. Like 93 degrees. Ah, uh, that is the spot. This is just what my middle-aged spicy Korean body needed. How are you liking the hot spring, Nolan? Yeah! Loving it? Yeah! Even Ellie's getting in on the action over there.
and I'm sure most people would agree, the view ain't too bad either. The first stop was the 25 square mile Palisade Reservoir, which was formed by the Palisades Dam. The reservoir is managed by the Caribou Targi National Forest and provides a water source for Idaho agriculture for the winter growing season. Playing in this water left our shoes very muddy, so bring a few rolls of paper towels to clean yourself off. Looking for a great spot to picnic? Why not go to the lunch counter? Between Alpine and Hoback along Snake River, you will find a short and quiet trail. At the end, there will be a flat rocky shoreline that is perfect for laying out a riverside meal. You may even get a chance to get a glimpse of some kayakers or two paddling downstream. Why not try to dip your feet while you're there? But make sure not to fall in. You may get swept away by the strong currents to a watery grave. This will be our last night at our cabin in the woods. We made some dinner, Ellie tried to open a childproof bottle of vitamins, and we enjoyed the beautiful sunset one last time. I hope the day I meet the Lord it can be just like this forever. Thank you, Jean and Doris, for a wonderful stay. But before going back, let's check out the Idaho Potato Museum. Located in the old Oregon Short Line Railroad Depot in the city of Blackfoot, Idaho, the Potato Museum provides information on potato history, agriculture, nutrition, and educational potato facts. Admission is $6 for adults, $3 for children 5 to 12, and under 4 enters for free. So let me take you on a journey through the wonderful world of potatoes. Maltodextrin and monodiglycerides isn't what makes Pringles so great. It's the potatoes. It looks like Marvel has some competition. Remember your fantasy of driving a tractor? Now you can do it in VR. And don't forget to stop by the main attraction, featuring three scary looking potatoes. The best part of the museum is the potato lab, where your kids can build their own potato cars and race it on a track built on an old potato harvester. There's even a computer lab to play potato themed games. After your tour, stop by the cafe and eat some genuine Idaho potato fries. What is that? Potato spun. I haven't seen that before. Is it like chocolate or something? Pick one from here. Okay. So we just have a little piece. Try it, Dylan. See how it, see how it tastes. Good? Yeah, or is it like chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> mm, with coconut is like uh, almond joy. Oh yeah, it does taste like coconut. Probably not much potato in it though.
Salt Lake City is the capital and the most populous city in the state of Utah. Temple Square is a 10-acre complex owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Within Temple Square, there is the Salt Lake Temple, Salt Lake Tabernacle, Salt Lake Assembly Hall, the Siegel Monument, and two visitor centers. Currently, there is heavy construction at Temple Square, and most of the attractions are closed to the public. Because the church, the Mormon temple is closed, we're going to the building across from the temple, which is their conference center. Oh, I guess you gotta enter here. Let's enter here and see what this is all about. Wait, the building is closed? Oh, event preparation. So nothing's open. Although most of everything was closed on the day we went, we could still walk the grounds of the assembly hall. Construction began on the assembly hall in August 11th, 1877, and the architecture is in the Victorian Gothic style. What did you say that was? The star of Walmart? It was apparent there wasn't much to do but frolic on the Temple Square lawns. So we checked into our Airbnb early. Packing. This is like a basement level of the property. It's like they're situated on like an acre of land. It's their guest suite. This is the bedroom. Here. The kids are watching. Yeah, I locked it. <laughs> watching Netflix or YouTube. And I'm reading the reading the guest book. The amenity the children were most interested in was the playground. We've never stayed in a house this big in our lives. Homes in Utah are really large. After playing, it was time to settle down with a little YouTube. We are now driving to the lava tubes, tabernacle lava tubes. And I'm pretty much off-roading right now in a passenger van. Must be four-wheel drive though. Because I haven't been stuck once. Ooh. It's like a Indiana Jones the ride. Like a safari. From Interstate 15, take exit 158, then drive another 1.8 miles until you hit Lava Tubes Road, then continue 2.1 miles south. The meadow lava tubes are a series of underground passages left by lava flows long ago. Parts of the tube have collapsed, leaving deep ditch-like corridors with floors of black boulders. Crazy. Crazy lava tube. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go through this. It looks like there's an ending over there. 
The tubes are fun and they are just minutes away from the Meadow Hot Springs. The round trip hike is about one mile. In some parts, it seemed that the ceiling might cave in, but we got through it safe and sound. We even took the time to collect a few rocks for our souvenirs. Even Nolan braved the treacherous boulders with a little help from Tata and Yeye. The view outside of the tunnels was like an alien landscape. And Dylan found some snakeskin. It's just the skin that they shed. You don't want a snake skin? <laughs> He's scared. The snake skin. It's okay, no, you don't have to. Nolan had so much fun, he wanted seconds. Although it was a little risky for children under four, it was truly an adventure to remember. Maybe next time we pass through Utah, we'll go to that hot springs. <laughs> Nolan, how does it feel? <laughs> Nolan, come here. Come it here. Very Nolan, let me see your face. Internationally renowned Swiss artist Hugo Rondinone's Seven Magic Mountains is a large scale site specific public art installation located near Jean Dry Lake and in Interstate 15. It's comprised of seven towers of colorful stacked boulders standing more than 30 feet high. The exhibit was opened on May 11, 2016 and was originally scheduled to be viewed for two years. In 2018, the Bureau of Land Management extended the permit until the end of 2021. So if you have a chance, come see it as soon as possible, or it may be gone forever. Okay, we are in our last and final Airbnb in Las Vegas. Three bedroom house. My mom sleeps. Me, Jen, and Ellie sleep. Bathroom. Kids are watching Pokemon. This is the kitchen and dining room table. This is where the kids sleep. Right here. And yeah, I thought that's up here too. I think there's a bathroom in here. Let me see. Where did they go bathroom last time? Oh, there's a bathroom right here, behind the curtain. It's our last day, and we're checking out some magic mountains. Seven of them. Down there. Seven magic mountains. Colored boulders stacked on top of each other. Dylan was inspired to make his own mini art installation. We are finally finishing up our trip with some shopping. We are at Barstow. 
two, three more hours, back home. It was a good nine days. But can't really can't wait to get back and rest. Well, thanks everyone for watching. This concludes our nine day adventure to Yellowstone. So don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and press the bell for notifications.